And now for something completely different. Ah! Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show with Lance Roberts. Presented by RIA Advisors. I think we're here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. I'm Rich Rosso, CFP with Danny Ratliff. CFP, Certified Financial Planners Squared. We are so happy you're here. I don't know about how happy we are to be here, but... <laughs> no, we're happy to be here. We are happy. So happy. You got to be happy with this market. You got to be happy with this... These, these animal spirits run amok in the direction you want. You've got to be happy with the broadening exposure to other parts of the market. You just got to be happy. And now I think we're seeing, Danny, a short seller scramble, especially when it comes to economists that really were down on the market this year. And I think they're playing catch up. And I think there's a dad joke in there about ketchup and, ketchup and mustard running a race. But I believe that we are seeing now estimates being revised higher for the S&P. People scrambling around to drop the R word as quickly as possible and anticipate the happiness that we're planning for the second half of the year. Yeah, I think it's who you, it depends on who you talk to, though. I mean, you look at leading leading economic index was down again. We got numbers this week, uh, 15 oh, consecutive months. Again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's not apply <laughs> logic to any of this, right? Oh, that Danny and his critical thinking. He doesn't know you. I'll get you in trouble in markets. Hey, in these markets, it will. Listen, we understand long term. We Short term, markets are primal, right? I mean, it's like being out in the forest. It's like, what's that? What's that show? Uh, running naked or naked and survival. What is naked. it? Getting naked? As if it wasn't good enough for people <laughs> just to survive, but now they have to do it naked. Yeah. I, I never watched that show because it just scared me to even think about it. I mean, why? Well, naked and afraid? Whatever it is. Scared. But I'm saying is now you can see how strong emotions are, and you're also getting to see that uh, I think, again, we are seeing a lot of... Um, Wall Street analysts revising upward their estimates. So it's going to be interesting. I think, I think as an investor, you do have to keep a level head. You do have to critically think it through as best as possible, But you, like Danny said. But you also have to remember that, listen, you can't fight the tape. You, you just can't. Very true. Right? You got to take advantage of it. You, um, money managers like us need to take advantage of it, right? Because then there's performance risk. So we have really barreled through most estimates for where Wall Street thought the S&B would be here by the end of the, I mean, even by the end of the year, we've passed those estimates. Yeah, I think the highest estimates were like 4,500. Yeah. Here we are. That was like, that was the one that was like the most bombastic, like, whoa, what? 4,500? Yeah. Right? So obviously, so you have a lot of um, analysts going ahead and, and doing that. So, and again, I think we've had unemployment rate that's been low. Although I did look at the Atlanta Fed wage tracker, you are seeing wages start to peak and falter here a bit. But this process is happening very slowly. And I think, uh, was it yesterday, great show with uh, Lance and Michael talking about why we're seeing so much, why this is taking so long, especially on the corporate side, just based on the trillions of cash that we've had, we've had there. So, um, again, we're going to see where we go wrong or we go right. Um, but this slowdown of the consumer has yet to happen. Now, again, to your point, Danny, and you mentioned some of the numbers, we are starting to see the grind down, but it's just very slow. And I think we anticipated the slowdown a lot sooner. So now you got to sort of reshuffle, regroup and move ahead. Well, and I think that, you know, looking at the index or the sectors that are up, who would have thought in this environment with all the things that are occurring, with looking at credit balances increase, savings declining, that consumer discretionary would be one of the top sectors? Yeah, big, 
and it's really based on to the point that people are still out there spending money. I mean, the United Airlines came out yesterday. They had a pretty good report. I'm looking at some of the reports for some of the discretionary spending like Chipotle. And I mean, whether it's on credit cards or whatever it is, people feel secure in their jobs. And in some ways, I think they're justified, Danny. I, you know, I think you're going to see labor hoarding here. Think about companies that say, gosh, we have too many employees, but if we let them go, how do we get them back? Right? I mean, I, I think there's this dilemma of how do I cut costs? Now, inflation is definitely ebbing. So we know that's also positive. But we also know that the core inflation rate of 4.8% is still far, far, far away from 2.2% that the Fed expects. So I don't think, you know, this pivoting talk is pretty much dead. And we look at probably another rate hike um, coming for the Fed. So who would have thought, to your point, which you just made earlier, that in the face of a rising interest rate, as, as rapid as they have, the, the quickest they ever have, as we play catch up, that we would be in a market like this and with a consumer the way the consumer is. Now, I don't think that's the same in many other areas of the world. It looks like the U.S. is standing out on consumerism. Yay! <laughs> Buy stuff you don't need. Except for Danny's household. If we were in Danny's household, the economy had already been in recession because he's, he's doing the right things. But everybody else seems to be, you know, again, you go to restaurants, they're still busy. Talk to people, smaller businesses that are in retail, busy. Yeah. People are out there spending money. They are. It's, uh, yeah. It's a recession at the Ratliff household. We are. <laughs> well, it's, it's good stewardship. Let's call it that. It's not really a recession. It's. It's doing what you should be doing um, overall. And I did read some transcripts from some companies. Again, and, and earnings season's pretty, I mean, just started. But you're not getting this dire forward guidance. Like, we're cautious, the consumer's slowing down. We're not, you know, you're not hearing. I, like, I read through some of the, the United Airlines stuff. And you're not seeing that. I was expecting to hear, like, Oh well, hmm, you know, things are really coming to a halt here. And you're not you're not seeing that. Did you read the story? Thinking about taking airlines. I think it was Delta. They kept people on the tarmac in the plane for four hours and the temperatures got to like a hundred and eleven to a hundred and fifteen degrees. Wow. And then they still had to go back. They never they never took off. I'm like, I don't understand that at all. So they had to actually get people out on stretchers and, you know, you're sitting in this compact area with no air conditioning. Yeah, that's terrible. I mean, but yet people are, people are still going on planes. I, I get it. But it's just amazing when you see stuff like that happen. We traveled a couple of months ago and it was, I mean, I was shocked at the amount of people. In the airports and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. That, you know, listen, that service, that travel, people still want to do it. And I think it's not because they're going to put money on credit cards. They don't care. It's that my job is pretty secure, so I'll just worry about it later. And when does later come? When you're ready for retirement and you don't have the money, which we're going to be talking about later. There's some cutesy tagline I'm supposed to use, but I forget. But we'll get back as <laughs> soon as <laughs> for the next uh, whatever we're going to do. We love you all. We'll be right back. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Declare your financial independence and prepare for the second half of 2023 with the RIA Mid-Year Economic Review. Saturday, July 22nd. With Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and special guest Chief Investment Strategist Lance Roberts. Get our report card for the market so far and what you need to know to invest profitably for the rest of the year. Register now for the RIA Mid-Year 
Year Economic Review, Saturday, July 22nd, with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts, realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets, and unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN, or again, simply online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Oh, and welcome back. So, the Wall Street Journal had an article about high-earning retirement savers losing some of their 401k tax breaks. So, they're talking about how, hey, listen, this tax deduction, because if you're 50 or older, you get a catch-up contribution in your 401k account, right? So, each year, you can put a 7500 bucks into your account, not chump change, right, of additional dollars that you're able to put in in addition to your 401k. But starting next year, based on the SECURE Act, those catch-up funds will have to be funneled into after-tax Roth accounts for those earning more than 145000 in the previous year. So, you know, the spirit of this article, Danny, is like this is a bad thing. In other words, oh my gosh, I can't put sock more money away in pre-tax accounts, which I'm going to get hit on later, right? Like, I don't think this is a bad thing. Like, they're talking about it in a way you're going to lose some of your tax break. Or are you really diversifying your retirement accounts, something we've preached forever using Roth? In addition to that, not only that, you have the ability to have this ability diversification that I can have this Roth money and now the government's sort of forcing you to do it. That sort of takes the whole story or the premise we get about people it's going away. Us, <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's the JG Wentworth effect codified, right? Now that they're saying, listen, we don't want you to put any more money into pre-tax. We need the money. But again, I look at this as a positive. I don't look at this as a negative. What do you think? No, I agree. I, I get the. I understand where they're going with the article. Everybody's been so conditioned to put pr everything pre-tax. In fact, I visited with a buddy the other day, high income earner, um, needed some help. Just hey, I'm putting funds here, and the spirit of the conversation was essentially, hey, I want to save as much money as I can now. I'm not worried about later. And I said, whoa, 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 hold on. Let's take a step back. Let's start thinking about some of these things that you probably haven't thought of yet, as far as taxation, how these things work what we may potentially see in the future. And he said, man, I've never, everybody's always said, put everything, you know, store everything away as quick as you can in a pre-tax environment because of his current taxes. I said, understandable, but are you going to truly retire in a much lower tax bracket? What right. does that look like? Right. And so I think this is probably a really good thing. Yeah, and I, I understand do. frustration surrounding it if you've just been piling money away in that pre-tax account. Yeah, because you might look at it yeah. As, oh man, I'm not. So what will this force people to do, Danny? Maybe not do a catch up. And that's the worst thing you could do. Because what we tell people, if I you're five that. to 10 years from retirement, if you're five to 10 years from retirement, we want you to do Roth anyway. Yeah. Now you're going to do that. Now I, what I don't see in there is matching contributions 
In other words, if I have an, a Roth 401k, and remember, a Roth IRA is different than a Roth 401k, right? Mm -hmm. Roth 401k is just a cousin of the four, to traditional 401k. When, I come, when your company matches your 401k Roth, it usually takes the match and make it pre-tax. But there's a provision in this act that says you can choose to make this contribution from the employer Roth yeah. now. So the government is, is really encouraging more Roth savers. And frankly, I think it's the best thing they ever did, even though their intention is suspect. Well, we know I their intention. They need the money. Well, they need the line. money. But but the point is, it's you know I I got to I want to make sure that people who listen to the show and then people I think who are on YouTube and listen to the show are a little bit more sophisticated about this and understand what we talk about that you you think you're going to retire in a lower tax bracket but you're not if you take into account Social Security and Irma or Medicare surcharges you're gonna it's going to be a problem. Well, well, let's think about this too. If yeah. If we're seeing the government more inclined to take money from you now, right? You said, pay me now or pay me later. What do you think is going to happen in the future? <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. It, actually, that's a very good point that I didn't think about if you look at it from that perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, they are, they are doing things that we thought they would never do. I mean, the, the whole sentiment has been for mm -hmm. so long mm -hmm. that these oh, Roth accounts are going to go away. Well, why? They need your money. That Why whole Peter Thiel thing, away? right? Yeah. That whole, they demonized him, but look what they're doing with legislation. Correct. Yeah, they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. <laughs> it also does make you think, Danny, as you talk about, when the IRS is your partner and you have no say in these pre-tax accounts, how else... And that's why you think about it. Think about it this way. If you think about start thinking like the government, which means everything looks dark. It's like the, ooh, it's like the enemy in a movie, the antagonist. Why wouldn't I allow leakage from accounts? I love leakage. I love leakage. Why do I love leakage? I'm going to be taxed on it. Yeah. Right? I'm going to remove the penalty. I never thought of that, Danny. You just opened up a whole new part of my brain. They want leakage because that leakage allows for more taxes to be paid on that money. Well, why do you think they put all this in, inside of these bills? I mean, yeah. why would they allow for you to take all this, this money from your retirement accounts? Right. And why do they not teach financial literacy? Right. I mean, this goes hand in hand, unfortunately. Because remember, there's going to be this $1,000 emergency distribution that you're going to be able to take as well from your retirement accounts beginning next year. Now, what happened to like the unified savings account? Remember, remember that? Uh, it was going to be you could put like $15,000 aside. You're going to get it tax free. Yeah, exactly. It's gone. Can you picture the tumbleweeds? I can. That's the bills, the probably all 100,000 pages of them <laughs> going down the prairie. Here's the issue you're going to have. You may not have an employer who is ready to do this Roth feature. So based on the article, it says 30% of Fidelity's 24,800 401k clients, and again, they're one of the largest providers of 401k, lack a Roth feature. And they hold on, we, we love Fidelity. However. We do. We, we work with Fidelity. Yeah. However. I mean, we why? don't love them, love them, yeah, like we want to marry them, but no. we love them. Why? Why do we love them? No, why do they not like this bill? <laughs> Uh, Can you please? No, never mind. I'm, I know no, we'll no, no, no. Let's go in this because I, I like say, these conspiracy. I like what's these your things. ode to, to fidelity, your poem, or your. But yeah, no, it's but no, go but bad. go ahead. What you said. Go ahead. And go on that line to think. But no, but, I think but it's why? Right. Why does fidelity? And why would they encourage? Because you have to remember, fidelity's setting these up, right? Yeah. They uh -huh. have the opportunity to push that Roth. Well, talk about it, right? Yeah. Or at least say, hey, or, you know, by the way, you to their clients, hey, here, mm -hmm. here's another option you mm -hmm. have. This would be really good. Let's have some flexibility within this plan. Why are they not? Because it's so easy to take money out of that, right? No. No, I, I, that may be one reason. But think about this. Would they rather get a, a full dollar of your dollars or yeah. would they rather get 85 cents? Ah, I see where you're going. Well, yeah. How, how, what do they build on? They're building. They're and that's why Wall Street never correct. really pushed the Roth either. That's right. Yeah. Boy, he's, he's on target today. On only four hours of sleep. <laughs>
That much. Yeah, it's a good day. <laughs> but we will say this is a good thing. You may want to talk to your benefits department if it's a smaller company and make sure that whoever provider you're using, they do have this Roth option and this mechanism uh, in place. And I think that's one be important. problem is that most people feel like they don't have a voice. And I will tell you this, I get, we get emails often like, hey, I'm pushing for this. And if you're pushing and you tell all of your other employers or your, your co-workers to push, yeah. they're at some point going to say, why are we not doing this? Well, what are we doing? Let's just do this. I don't want these emails anymore. I'm tired of so-and-so continuing to call me every quarter. Mm -hmm. So push for it. What, what harm is it? No, that's true. So general rules, if I am young and snappy like you, and someone comes to you and says, hey, you know, I'm going to max out my, my 401k contribution. I can't do my catch up, but I can maximize it. How would you tell them to contribute to their 401k Roth versus traditional pre-tax? You know, I think it varies for everybody, right? I mean, I, I, I like the Roth. A lot of people have a hard time going all in. So if, yeah, if you're one true. of those people, right, because you think, oh, my gosh, you start looking at everybody has a payroll calculator um, for 401k contributions. What's mm -hmm. the overall impact? But then when they start thinking about, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to pay taxes on this now. Uh, and, and I think the mindset switching that is difficult for many. And, and I get it. So maybe you start off doing half and half. Do 50-50. Um, I can be inclined to go say, Hey, do all of it. Right. Um, if you are very young and starting off in the workforce, I would encourage you to put everything you can aside. The problem that I'm seeing rich is that shoot people are just struggling to pay their bills when you're starting off. Right. So now you're not putting as much in and you say, well, I put more money in this way, but nobody thinks about the money when it comes out, how much you actually physically have. Right. So you know, I think that if you, you start and almost you could do this, like, you know how on the 401ks they have automatic where each year it increases by 1%. Mm -hmm. You could do that. Yeah. Set some parameters in every year. You know, Especially if you think you're, gonna, you're not in your peak earning years yet. You correct. know, Roth, having more in Roth is not going to hurt you as bad. Plus, you're also going to have fights, not like, not like Fight Club. But you're going to have some in, embroilment with CPAs because... Their job, and justifiably so, is to help you save taxes now. Danny and I are also understanding this whole path to retirement and in retirement. So we're looking at, well, you're a human capital earnings machine. Pay the taxes now. Yeah. And have completely tax-free income in retirement. Listen, there have been studies that nobody talks about that show even if you're going to be in the 15, in the lowest tax, in the, some of the lowest tax brackets in retirement, Roth still works. Not Hyman Roth from The Godfather because he didn't make it. This Roth is different. And we'll be right back. Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. Declare your financial independence and prepare for the second half of 2023 with the RIA Mid-Year Economic Review. Saturday, July 22nd with Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and special guest Chief Investment Strategist Lance Roberts. Get our report card for the market so far and what you need to know to invest profitably for the rest of the year. Register now for the RIA Mid-Year Economic Review. Saturday, July 22nd with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. RealInvestmentAdvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. 
Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. In 1999, a parafiduciary group of financial advisors were busted by corporate giants for trying to operate in their clients' best interest. These men promptly escaped from a high-cost margin environment to the Houston Energy Corridor. Today, still excoriated by their former employers, they survive as protectors of others' fortunes. If you have a problem about preserving capital, if no one else can help, and you can find them right here, maybe you should hire the RIA team. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. Unfortunately, we kind of got rid of fundamental investing about a decade ago. So I'm not sure it actually matters anymore. But, you know, we keep hanging, you know, us old guys like me and Mike, we keep hanging on to fundamentals. We think they're going to matter someday. The Real Investment Show podcast. Same show, your schedule. My tombstone will say, here lies Lance Roberts, who still believes fundamentals matter. But, you know. (laughs) realinvestmentadvice.com. That may not be too far in the future, but. But, you know, and now another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click ask a question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Now with the new and improved Before the Bell reports, plus each day's radio shows, subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So tomorrow, we are going to have our mid-year economic review. You know, um, Danny and I started Candid Coffee during the pandemic because we want to give people a chance to voice how they're feeling about their finances, ask questions, very informal. And from there, it's gotten very successful. Um, It's been a real great way for clients and people that listen to the show and read the blog and sign up for the newsletter to participate and we get to talk to you Um, and it's a very informal across the table kind of thing and it's really done well and tomorrow I think we're gonna have a lot of people tomorrow but this is with Lance and it's gonna talk about you know let's talk about the mid-year economic review let's talk about managing risk going forward how to invest for the remainder of 2023 market report card, some financial planning tips. So the Fed, so tomorrow is a really, really good one um, that you should attend. Just go to realinvestmentadvice.com, sign up for our webinar. I met with someone yesterday, really nice gentleman from Florida, entrepreneur, uh, has a two-hour conversation with this guy. His life was just fascinating to me. Uh, I always, I think when you become an advisor, some advisors, I think they're fascinated with people's stories. And Danny and I are going to start a podcast once a month. We're going to, we're going to tape our first one today. And it's really going to be about Danny and I's financial stories. Uh, Ted and Brad Klontz call it the, uh, the, like the triggering moment, the financial flashpoint. Something happens to you as a child, and it doesn't mean happen to you, but something you you see in your parents and so forth, 
that sets you off on this money path. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in our money scripts for our first, um, yeah, our first one. That'll be very cool. Very first podcast. So, um, uh, so if you can't make the economic review, we will definitely have it available to you later on. But, you know, live is really great. Lots of great questions. Well, you're going to have the ability to uh, ask some questions as we go. So we do keep a very open format. Mm -hmm. um, so as we go along, if you have questions, we're happy to address. Um, but yeah, it'll be good. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. Central Time. So inherited IRAs have become, talk about a flashpoint. And this is where I'm going to go back to Roth. This seems like the all Roth, all, all Roth show. The Ratliff Rosso Roth show. Don't say that too fast. You'll sound like Scooby-Doo. Friends <laughs> like, who's Scooby-Doo? No, Brent knows Scooby-Doo. I know who Scooby-Doo is. I wonder who did Scooby-Doo's voice. I can't remember. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. <laughs> Ruh-ro. <laughs> Ruh-ro Roth. Ruh-ro <laughs> Roth. All right, I can keep going here, but I'm not. All right, so inherited IRAs. If you have a non-spouse beneficiary, like for me, it's my daughter. Before the SECURE Act, this iteration came out, she would have been able to inherit that money. She's 25 years old. And she would have been able to take distributions over her life expectancy. And again, part of a J.G. Wentworth initiative for the government said, no, 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 not anymore. For the most part, she needs to take that money out over 10 years. And what's inconclusive is, if I was taking required minimum distributions, does she need to at least continue those? By the way, that is still up in the air. I thought by now, Danny, we would know. So people I'm meeting with now are finding the Roth doing IRA conversions to Roth as a legacy initiative. In other words, I'll pay the taxes for my child and leave them my Roth, and they'll have a nice nest egg there. Now, even though they have to take it out over 10 years, they have to completely drain it over 10 years, and they could do it any way they want, it's tax-free. It won't affect them from a tax perspective. So more money going to them, because you can have a child, and when we do our retirement income planning, we want to know your child's sort of marginal tax rate now, because we will run in the iteration how Roth conversions will benefit them if they are inheriting that particular IRA. So Roth has become very popular, Danny, as a way to transfer. Well, if you think about it, I mean, hopefully your children have acquired assets as they've, you know, they've aged. Um, they may be in peak earnings years when you pass. Uh, if they're still not living working. in your basement. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> or your attic. Exactly. If that's the case, we're probably not too worried about that. But, um, you know, that's, that's something I think that needs to be taken into consideration when we look at this, is that if you're looking forward to create that legacy intent, what is the best and easiest way to do so? And a Roth can certainly help you in that aspect because, look, it's been two years running. We've been trying to get some more clarity surrounding what exactly they're going to do from within this bill. Like, what right. does it actually mean? We're really waiting on the attorneys <laughs> to tell us, We're still waiting. here's what we really want out uh. of this. And it's unfortunate because, you know, last year they took it down to the wire and then finally said, ah, well, we're not going to do it like the last week of the year. And thankfully they've said, hey, 23, don't worry about it. You're not going to have to take an RMD this year if you've inherited it. What was it, after 2020? After 2020. Yeah. So they finally came out with that. So they're also saying that they're going to give IRA owners who turned 72, turning 72, who took RMDs, that you can return the money to their accounts. But, you know, it's been a really poor job, I think, in general of, of getting that information out. I think that you know, most firms, you know, most custodians send something out once. Hey, FYI, it changed from 70 and a half to 72. Right. And that was it, right? So if you didn't talk to somebody about it. Like, we're still talking to people. And they'll be like, yeah, I got to start taking it out. And I'm like, wait a second. I think you've got a little bit of time here. Mm -hmm. And so kind of going back through that and, and having that conversation. It makes it tough on you, but it makes it tough on your advisor because we have to stay on top of all this stuff. And then the custodians have to be on top of all this stuff. And it's so inconclusive. It really, I mean, I know, I know the government's always been dysfunctional, but are you all feeling that it is beyond that at this point? 
Yeah, like what are we waiting on? On this? I don't know. And why would you at this the last no minute brainer. change it last year? Because last year, if you can recall, it was just like, hey, we've got ten years. Then you get to like December, and they're like, whoa, hey, we think we're going to want you to take it out every year. Yeah. If, so people start taking it out, saying, well, I don't know what to do here. Let's just make an estimate. I don't want to get caught later. Right. I mean, I don't know what to do here, so I'm going to pay the taxes. I mean, it is just, it's a, it's a cluster frump. It really is terrible. I. I mean, this is so simple, Danny. Either you continue required minimum distributions for the the inheritor or the beneficiary, if you have or not. I want to know who's fighting about this. Like, what's the I don't even up? think there's a fight. I just think they're all on vacation. I have no idea what's going on. And I, I mean, I understand why the trust and faith in the government is at an all time low. But we see it in our business based on this kind of stuff, which is really. Not rocket science. It's so simple. Just get it done. And we can't get it done. And then we get it done at the very last minute. And they go back, oh, well, you go ahead and put the money back. How many people are going to put the money back? First of all, I don't even want you to put the money back because I would like you to drain your IRA before RMD. So put it in the brokerage account. But who's going to put the, the I, I, who's going to put it back? <laughs> it's just, so that's how they cover themselves. Well, we'll allow you to put We're going to allow back. you to put it back for the next two months. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, you know, you've done a great job of letting people know on that as well. What? Because they can do it till September, right? I think that's the, the time frame that if you take your RMD already, they give you a very small window of what you can do. We are still waiting for the final regs. Well, this that's is, what we keep saying. This We're is like waiting. middle management, Rich. Middle management comes in. They've got to disrupt everything. Things have ran great, but they have to justify their job so, you know, they can get it, step up to the next one. And then by the time you find out it didn't really work, they're gone, right? Yeah, I'm... Um, Except these idiots are still here. It's, it is disappointing. And again, if people are trying to do the... Yeah, Brent's biting his tongue. We all yeah, are, believe me. I know. We was, all are. I was being nice. I know you are. Wait till the camera goes. Wait till the whole thing shuts down. Woof! <laughs> you should hear Danny. Uh, it is very disheartening. And it does create unnecessary stress for people that are looking to do the right thing, take their distributions... So um, they should just make the decision and move on. They went so they went back and forth on this. I don't know how many times between taking a minimum distribution, not taking it over the 10 years, taking it, not taking it. It was like, you all are being ridiculous. You're all looking stupid. So now we're going to wait for the final regs. And I really thought, you know, by March, April, probably we would get it. Watch we get it in December. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> Yeah, if you put that money back, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take it back out. By the way, so um, Ed Slot, who's an IRA specialist, I mean the, the man lives, eats, and breathes IRAs. He does. That guy's all about. I mean, he's, I mean, he looks at. He looks like he's not eating. He's eating just IRAs. If I if I had to envision what an IRA looked like, it would be him. Yes, me too. If I go look him up, you'll understand. When you look at him, you'll go, "Yep, I get it." He goes, it doesn't look like we'll see the IRS's long-awaited final regs on the subject anytime soon. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but we all are going to try to make it help you navigate it and make the right decisions. Well, think about productivity. I mean, you think about all the things you have to go back and forth, back and forth, conversations, because these guys can't figure out what they want to do. And this is the this is the simple stuff. This isn't like Oppenheimer creating the atom bomb thing. This is simple stuff. And they can't get it done. Well, should be. I'm not as mean as I could be, and I want people to be more grateful for that. For me, it's I'm not as sarcastic as I could be, especially right now. Thanks for that little sign up there, Brent, on the screen. We'll be right back.
Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Declare your financial independence and prepare for the second half of 2023 with the RIA Mid-Year Economic Review. Saturday, July 22nd with Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and special guest Chief Investment Strategist Lance Roberts. Get our report card for the market so far and what you need to know to invest profitably for the rest of the year. Register now for the RIA Mid-Year Economic Review, Saturday, July 22nd, with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts, realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets, and unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN at realinvestmentadvice.com. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. And now another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Camera didn't like me. Didn't want me back. But we're back. Camera's running from Rich. <laughs> Wait. I don't know. There's like there's more camera. There are more cameras here than uh, Desi White House. and Lucy had on the on the Lucy show. Like three cameras shoot. We putting them to shame. There's like thirty cameras in here. There's one. There's one right up Danny's nose. We don't really use it very often. I mean, there is so many cameras in here. I don't know what's going on. Look, and if somebody drops something in here, you're finding it. They all you know, require please. constant attention. Just let me say that. Yeah, they're all like like children that need to be wrangled. They're. Or cats, they're they're just a lot of work, lots of work. But um, so we talk a lot about long term care. <clears throat> there we talk about. Uh, I think the people that get forgotten are the caregivers. We talk to a lot of those caregivers every day, uh, adult children um, who are not only taking care of their children but they're taking care of parents. These are the people that actually are awakened to long-term care planning because they're going through it with their parents. And obviously people will be living longer. They might be physically healthy, uh, but if you have a mental impairment, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, you can live a long time and yet there's a lot of expenses. But most people, there are caregivers and caregiving responsibilities. And there was a study done by the EBRI talking about retirement confidence for caregivers. And it sort of makes sense, Danny, the economic or financial distress that people are going through when it comes to that. Lower levels of assets, more problems with debt. Um, Now, these are people, according to the study, that are committed to retirement planning. But they, they are really putting their lives on hold in many cases. Matter of fact, I met with a younger woman over the phone and she she doesn't she doesn't have to live with her parents. And <clears throat> she really doesn't live with her parents, but what they did is they put like a she shed on the property behind her, up at their house. And she built it up and it's really nice and all that. And she says, listen, I don't have to live here. 
I mean, I have a good job and all that. But my parents, when I get home from work, they do need me. And they help each other, but I'm, I go grocery shopping and all. In other words, there's this even a hybrid where you may not be doing full caregiving, but you are assisting parents. So when you, when you go out on a date, she says, it's funny, I go out on a date and uh, like, oh, I still live at home with my parents. And they're like, oh God, you're such a loser. But it's really noble what she's doing. She's, she spent all her own money to build this thing. She wants to give her parents, pro- she, they, her parents said, you could live in the house. But she says, no, 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 I would rather do this. Um, you know, there's like all kinds of decisions that have to be made. And this, this quantifies sort of the retirement confidence that caregivers have. And in many, in many cases, you think that the state of retirement itself is poor for Americans. Caregivers are even in a different situation. Yeah, you know, we talked on Wednesday about just people, disruptions, like when most people expect yeah. to retire. Yep. And you find that it's often much sooner for, for many people than when they anticipated, right? Everybody yeah. thinks 62, 65, or I'm going to work till 70, and usually something happens. And this is a major disruption. It is. I think what's interesting about the survey is that, you know, talking about the the financial strain on them is great. However, they're more cognizant or mindful of their own financial planning and their retirement planning. Because of what they're going through. Yeah. yeah. And you, yeah. you probably switched gears on, you know, obviously, from an accumulator to a distributor. But you had to become much more mindful about what you're spending, where it's going, how these funds will, will work and last. When you take Social Security, I mean, all these things begin to add up. So, you know, in some ways... Bringing that to the forefront, I think, can be a really good thing, but the financial strain could be devastating long term. And if, yeah, and so caregivers in the survey are defined as those who provide unpaid care for an adult or child within the past 12 months in a non institutional setting and help their care recipient with at least one activity of daily living. Oh man, I'm doing that right now. With three? <laughs> yeah. My, yeah, see? And then they might be doing it for you. Just so, raising kids. The game. Can't be considered a caregiver. <laughs> yeah. I put myself in a situation. I can empathize with this. <laughs> it does show you, though, the escalation as people get older, dynamics are going to change, right? How are employers going to handle this, too? Because, you know, you may have a great employee that needs extended time off to be a caregiver, and you don't really want to lose this employee, and you really would be a jerk to let that person go at a really terrible time, especially when they've been good employees. Uh, you know, like with us, we do feel an allegiance to our employees. We, they're part of this family. They provide the value, what we call intangible value to us for our clients. Um, I don't think we would be able to operate without them. So, you know, when they need additional time and all that, we try to be very flexible, but large corporations, I don't see that. I mean, I, I mean, I, it's just going to be a dynamic that is going to continue to be an issue as people live longer and need assistance, but can't afford it. And that's why planning for your own long-term care, whether you self-insure or not, is really important, Danny. And that's why when you do the financial plan, you go through the mechanics to see if you do need long-term care insurance. Now, some people don't. Some people don't. We go through the numbers and we say, hey, if you're not looking to leave a legacy to your children, you'll spend down your estate. We, we look at different studies from Genworth and other places to figure out how much it's going to be, whether you want assisted living, uh, just in, you know, most people would like to age in place at home, but whatever it's going to be. And that's where a financial plan will tell you if you're vulnerable or not. And how do you work the numbers into long-term care. yeah, And not only that, you don't even need traditional long-term care insurance. There are these hybrid policies and other ways to do it, riders and other things that make it a little bit easier for you to go ahead and do it. But you've got to be aware that you might need it and you may not want your children to do it. That's right. And, you know, with like you mentioned, with the mental issues, I mean, mm-hmm. or cognitive, excuse me, not mental, but cognitive, so to speak. Mental impairment, yeah, yeah. cognitive impairments. I, yeah. I think that's a that's a big thing. Now, did you see that Eli Lilly and Biogen just came out with a new drug? Yes. That's supposed to be like groundbreaking, but it's $26,000 a year right now. And is that, that'll that change the game and hopefully that cost comes down. But, you know, people just, are living longer, right. but what's their, what's their mental state, so to speak? 
And what's right. the cost of it? And there are breakthroughs, and there's a lot of preventive, preventative technology that is coming out. Um, Peter Attia, a doctor, wrote a great book about this. Um, Tony Robbins actually wrote a great book about all the technology, more, more on the technology as opposed to lifestyle, but more the technology spin of what's coming down the road for, you know, full body MRIs, <clears throat> ways to use stem cell. Right now, that's the new thing, like AI, like you see stem cell replacement therapy everywhere. And I don't know, I think you got to be really cautious. Um, well, that's the reason why, Danny, <clears throat> it probably happened when you had your children. They talk about like keeping, some, what is it, like uh, blood from the placenta for the children? Yep. Because the core best- blood. Core blood. Yep. So the, the cord blood, because the best stem cells to have are those. So yeah. if the kids ever have any kind of disease or anything like that, that they go to the cord blood, and that is really better than getting, say, a transplant or anything else. But, you know, to Tanya's point, there's going to be these technologies that might even make, you know, dementia a thing of the past. That would be amazing. But your still body, you're still going to age. There's still going to be a period where you may need help with someone with one activity or two activities of daily living. So you do still have to plan for that long-term care event. It may not be as dire because, because when people hear long-term care, they go, Oh, I'm not going to be sitting in no nursing home and drooling into materials. Well, that's what you well, think, that, but that's what you think about, but that's not realistically probably the case. You may fall and break a bone. You, you know, something that is going to re require that you need help with bathing or eating, even if it's for a few hours a day. And that's a cost. And believe it or not, Medicare is not your answer. Medicare is not long-term care insurance. There are pockets or components in Medicare that will allow, if rules are followed, certain things, rehabilitation, nursing home, skilled nursing care, but it's very, very limited. But I still hear this from people today. Oh, well, Medicare is going to do that. No, it's not. It's not there for that. And even if it did, it wouldn't be what you wanted or needed. Yeah, because it's not going to pay for what you want. Yeah, think about, <laughs> well, just think about why you have yeah, Medigap. That's true. Right? I mean, you have holes within Medicare that Medigap fills a supplemental policy. It, it would be the same exact thing. It would, yeah, like if be you need what help you need. putting on your underwear, they only help you with one leg. How good is that? I mean, I, don't, I need my underwear. I need both legs in the underwear, not just one. The government can't trust the government to do it. So look at the private sector. And, and again, it, it's a relief, I find, when, when you go through, especially with married couples, which I think it's a lot easier, you don't need as much long-term care insurance as you think when you go through the planning process and depending on the assets that you have. And I think for a lot of people, that's really cool. Oh my gosh, I thought I had to buy this expensive long-term care. No, we can do what I call niche long-term care. Yeah. Just as much as you need to fill a certain gap. But you're only going to know this information if you have a plan. You just don't go out and buy insurance. You do the, your plan first to see how much insurance you need. Correct. That's how it works. Join us tomorrow for the REA Mid-Year Economic Review. Sign up at Real Investment Advice. Sign up for Lance's newsletter. He's crabby and writing it right now. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us.